This is a Gundam Unicorn figure. This is from the Universe line of figures, so it's not a model kit. However, I do have high grade model kits for it. I just haven't built them yet. Here's a quick look at the front, the side, other side, bottom, and back. Now I want to take some time to look at the box art because box art is important. People spend hundreds of thousands of hours working on box art, and it usually either gets thrown in trash or in storage never to be seen again. And also it helps me make the video longer, so there's that. Leave a like and subscribe. So yeah, here we have the box art. It's got uh it's got plastic on it. So so you can see the figure and it's got art on the box. I mean, that looks pretty cool, right? The back also has some art on it, showing off some of the features of the figure and some other figures you can get as well. And I do have the RX-7A2 lined up for review. Here's a description on the Unicorn Gundam. You get a bit of a description here. And these figures are six inches. You get enticing words like action and articulation. Spoiler alert, it's not. Now let's open it up. Now the best ways to open these figures up is by stabbing straight through the packaging or you could carefully turn it to the side and then absolutely ravaged the packaging open. There we go. In my opinion, that's the best way to open things right before eating the box. And it doesn't even taste that great. But now back onto the figure. Now straight off, this figure comes with a lot of accessories and it's already yellowing. That is more disappointing than the horrors humanity is capable of. Honestly, that is very disappointing, but I guess that gives me an excuse to customize this now. Anyways, so moving on to the accessories. It does come with a lot of accessories. You get the shield, which does not open and close. A little weapon of war. The G word is too risky to use on YouTube. The backpack. Two beam saber hills that look very different. And two beam saber effects pieces that look a lot like candy. Once again, my intrusive thoughts are kicking in. However, there is a reason for why it is this color and we will get to that in a bit. Be patient or your life is forfeit to the eye people. You get a stand attachment as well as an attachment for the shield, which goes right on there. Please go in there, don't embarrass me. Okay, there we go. And you get this skirt back piece, which you plug in right there, if you have good hand-eye coordination. I'm not entirely sure how I missed that. Here's a look at the front of the figure with the yellow spots mocking me. Now the figure itself honestly feels pretty solid, and the material is very different from the Gunpla model kits. And now I don't know how to explain this, but the figure itself does feel a bit rubbery in some areas. Does that make sense? Am I making sense? And here's a look at the back. Now the figure itself looks all right. The proportions are definitely not show accurate. Just take a look at those shoulder pieces. The color of the psycho frame isn't show accurate either. It feels like it's more of a muscular pink color and it's exposing its meaty insides. But the reason for this color choice is because it glows under a black light. Here's a better look at it. Unfortunately, it doesn't show up too great on camera. And the beam saber effect piece also glows under UV. Now the gold paint on this figure does look really great. The eyes are a shiny green as well as the front camera and the back camera. Now for the articulation, the head is on a ball joint so you can move it around and you can have him look all the way around as well. His arms are able to move up all the way there. The shoulder pads are also on a ball joint so they can move around pretty freely. The shoulders can also move back and forth. The bicep area can spin around. The elbows can bend. The arms can rotate. Not really a whole lot of waist movement there and very minimal movement on the abs. The skirt pieces can move a little bit, however the back one cannot move. Now his legs can go all the way forward like that, and the front skirt pieces can move. The knee bend is pretty bad though, like I can't move this any further, and this piece in the way prevents the leg from moving all the way back. But if you take it off, his leg can move further back. Now back again when I was talking about how he feels really rubbery, this piece is definitely made of a flexible material. The legs are capable of moving out all the way like that, and they can twist around on the thighs. Feet can move up and down and around, and these right here can move as well. Overall though, the articulation on this is definitely way more limited than a model kit. Now I do want to notice something about the back. On the back of the right leg here, this piece seems like it's bending out a little bit. Also, those marks on the feet are horrible. Now there's more beam saber hills here, but they don't actually flip out. They're really only just... Uh. It comes with extra beam saber hilts that are on both sides of his arms. Now let's go ahead and attach the backpack. And the other beam saber hilts can plug in back here. One on each side. And these can move around. The beam saber effect pieces just easily go in place like that. Now even though this beam effect piece glows under a black light, I think I still prefer the clear ones for model kits. Now for him to actually hold the beat sabers, beat sabers. Now for him to actually hold the beam sabers, take this off, then we can place these hands here, and then you just have him firmly oh grasp it in hand. And the grip on it is pretty good, it's not going to be falling out anytime soon, and he can only hold it in the left hand. The other hand accessory is a trigger finger, and we'll get to that in a bit. The effect pieces also attach onto the wrist hilts as well. Unfortunately, you can't really put it on the wrists anywhere like that. And the pieces can also go on the GUN thingy as well. Now to put the shield on, it pegs in right here, and for this weapon, pop out this hand, 
then take the trigger hand, put this hand in, and we can place the weapon on there. And I think it looks better like this than with the Beat Sabers. Now the shield here doesn't look too bad. It's got some nice molding work on here. And this weapon also has some nice detail work. And there is green on the scope right here. Here it is next to a high grade kit. This one is from the the one with the the, the one where where I forget. Obviously the figure is much bigger than the model kit and it is also a much more solid figure compared to your average model kit. But the model kits do have a bigger range of articulation and I still prefer model kits over the figures. Now here it is next to a not a master grade but a no grade 1 100 scale and as you can see it is smaller than it. Here it is next to an Optimus Prime model kit from Flame Toys. Here it is next to a model kit of the Astro Megazord or whatever it's called in Mega Ranger. Here it is next to the build Ice Age figure arts. Next to a little horror figure that transforms into the Gundam Unicorn. Here it is next to Tiny Optimus, a knockoff figure of Spike, Steampunk Batman. Is it obvious I'm trying to make the video longer? Here it is next to a tiny Meta Bee. Here it is next to Go Kai O. If you want a review on this guy, let me know in the comments. Look, here it is next to a Superman figure. And here it is next to... Dominic Toretto's car, because Gundam is about family. Black Cat, a Spider-Man figure. My middle finger, Master Chief. Okay, I think that's enough. This figure is not really that good. Hopefully this figure will be a lot better. But I also have this. Make sure to check out my other videos right here. And don't forget my Patreon is only $1 a month. With your help, I can make more and better videos. Hopefully with figures that aren't stained.